welcome students to this new lecture on real analysis in which we shall prove that limit of a sequence if it exists is unique this is our third lecture on real analysis if you want to watch in other videos on real analysis you can visit my playlist consider we have a sequence sn and this sequence sn converges to two limits l1 and sn converges to another limit l2 if we prove that l1 is equal to l2 then it will be proved that actually limit is same or limit is unique so our target is to prove that l1 is equal to l2 now in term of limit we can express this relation as limit n approaches to n infinity sn equal to l1 and limit n approaches to n infinity sn equal to l2 now we apply definition of limit one by one this implies sn minus l1 mod is less than epsilon by 2 for all n greater than or equal to m1 and for second limit we can write sn minus l2 mod is less than epsilon by 2 for all n greater than or equal to m2 now student if we choose maximum of these two values that is let m is equal to maximum of m1 and m2 then about two relations also hold for this maximum value now i rewrite above relation that is for maximum value m sn minus l1 mod is less than epsilon by 2 for all n greater than or equal to m and sn minus l2 mod is less than epsilon by 2 for all n greater than or equal to m this is our equation number 1 and equation number 2 we just replaced m1 and m2 by m now our target is to prove that l1 equal to l2 for this we prove that modulus value of l1 minus l2 is equal to 0 <coughs> if we prove that l1 minus l2 mod equal to 0 then l1 is equal to l2 so our target is to prove this limit is equal uh, this modulus value is equal to 0 for this we add and subtract sequence sn so we have l1 minus sn plus sn minus l2 whole mod this is equal to l1 minus l2 mod we just added and subtracted sequence sn our target is to prove l1 minus l2 mod equal to 0 for this we use this relation sn minus l1 mod less than epsilon by 2 for all n greater than or equal to m and 
similarly this second relation so we want to apply these two relations that's why we are adding and subtracting sn now we rearrange these terms we can write it as minus of sn i write in this term first plus l1 plus sn minus l2 whole mod now i rearrange these terms as we can take minus sign as common from these two terms so we are left with sn minus l1 plus sn minus l2 whole mod now i can change the order of these two relation that is sn minus l2 mod now uh, sorry first i write it as sn this is equal to sn minus l2 minus of sn minus l1 i just interchange the order of these two now we have a property of determinant that is a minus b whole mod is less than or equal to mod of a plus mod of b now i apply this property as on left hand side <coughs> we have l1 minus l2 mod and this is actually less than or equal uh, this is less than or equal to because we are using this inequality sn minus l2 mod plus sn minus l1 mod now we use equation 1 and equation 2 sn minus l1 mod is less than epsilon by 2 for all n greater than or equal to m so this is less than epsilon by 2 and second one is also less than epsilon by 2 and condition is for all n greater than or equal to m which implies l1 minus l2 mod is less than epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 is epsilon for all n greater than or equal to m now we have a relation that if now uh, a equal to b if and only if a minus b mod is less than epsilon for all epsilon and greater than 0 now by using this relation as this relation holds for all values of epsilon so by using this result we can write l1 is equal to l2 now we have proved that these two limits l1 and l2 are actually same hence limit of a sequence if it exists is always unique which completes the proof of this theorem hence proved thank you very much for watching this video lecture